Hi, this is Jeff from Simple Forex System. We have another video for you guys to uh, take a look at. Um, before we get started here, I want to uh, make a point, try to do so in as non-blasphemous a manner as possible. Um, th there's two things for you guys to remember, remember when you're using uh, Rinko charts and asking you know me questions. Um, the first is I'm not God, okay, uh, and I say that to make the second point. There are no Ten Commandments here, okay. You guys are free to experiment with this stuff as much as you want. Uh, if a certain indicator is not working for you and you find one that is working better, you do not need my permission to use it. <laughs> you just throw it up there and give it a shot, see what happens. Um, and you know, there's there's several people out here who have been experimenting uh, with different variations on Rinko. And uh, one of them, actually, I, I got to admit, I really like this. I like this a lot. And uh, the guy who did this is named Parker. It's a buddy of mine, lives out west, and I've known Parker, been communicating with him about Forex for years now. And uh, a couple of days ago, he sent me an email and said, Have you been trying two pip Rinkos? And uh, of course, no, I haven't. I have three was really about his. Uh, uh, you know, as fast as I really wanted to to make things, uh, because three pip rinkos move awfully fast, and uh, I mean, even for me, you have to you know be pretty quick on the trigger in order to be able to get in and and, and take trades. But he said, put up some two pip rinkos, throw up the Hama, and throw up the zigzag indicator. Now the Hama is part of the download package that uh, comes with Rinko. You've got that on the, I think it's in the second uh, zip file that has indicators in it. And ZigZag is just a standard uh, indicator that you get uh, with the MT4 platform. If you open up custom indicators, it's right down there at the very bottom, since everything is listed alphabetically, it says ZigZag. Um, and what Parker told me, and, and his method basically of trading this, is, is this. He puts up the two pip uh, boxes, he puts up the Hama and with the zigzag. He trades the color changes on the Hama. So if the Hama is red, he's looking for um, the first blue candle to go ahead and buy. If the uh, Hama is is uh, red, and you know if he's coming in late to the game, if the Hama is already red, he's waiting for it to turn blue. If it's already blue, he waits for it to turn red. The zigzag is strictly there to tell him where to put his stop loss. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, let's look at this trade right here. Uh, this is your first red Hama candle. It's a cell, uh, and the cell would have been about 135.08. The stop loss would have been up here at about. Uh, let's see if we can get this figured out here. Uh, what is that at? It's 20, that's 22. Okay, so that's about a 14 pip stop loss. That is about as far as you want to go with a stop loss on this when you're, when you're getting the, uh, the, the color changes to take place. Usually it, it's 8 to 10, 12 pips. Uh, 14 is the far outside edge. So, you know, there you go. You're at the far outside edge. You would sell on this candle because you got your first red Hama with a 14 pip stop loss uh, in just a matter of minutes uh, after a brief uh, drawdown of a grand total of four pips you know you're back up to uh, break even then it's two four six eight ten twelve you're up 14 pips and just so you know the distance and time from that the entry on that trade would have been at 1659 which would be 959 in the morning and you reach down here at plus 14 at 1008 so about nine minutes uh, you're up 14 pips. There are two ways to look for an exit on this. You can get out on the first blue candle, which, um, you know, if, if you're just getting into the trade and you immediately get a blue candle, not advisable. As long as the Hama remains red, you know, you stay in the trade. You got to expect a little bit of a drawdown, especially with two pip candles. You know, you're going to get just the normal movement of things. Uh, you're going to get up and down a little bit. Um, but if you if you've you know you found yourself up 10 12 14 16 pips when you get your first blue candle get out 
wait for the next red candle to close the red box as long as the hama remains red you sell again and you know you're right here you'd be selling it uh, basically at 3500 and you got you managed to get up about eight or nine pips down here and technically you're still in the trade you haven't even seen a blue candle yet although you're in danger of seeing one you know right now and you can just continue to just chip away as long as the uh, hama remains red every time you get another red candle you just sell and just keep moving your way down um, you know, right now, of course, the, the main concern is we're hovering right around 3,500, so it's a huge round number, uh, uh, and price has been kind of sticking around this level now for about the last uh, 30 or 45 minutes anyway, uh, getting up above it a little bit, down below it a little bit, back up above it, so, you know, you've always got that, that danger of... Uh, uh, of, of that magnetic force that seems to attach itself to the big round numbers. So, you know, we're dealing with that. But, uh, you know, had you sold right here, you could have gotten out another four or five pips. Uh, and now you're waiting for, you know, the next sell signal. It's a fantastically easy system to trade. And what I like about the most is you are not limited to trading this only uh, during the high volume hours. Uh, if you think about it, uh, you know, even during the slow hours, there are plenty of 10 and 15 pip moves that take place. Uh, and I'm talking, you know, after lunch in New York, uh, in the hours when uh, Australia is open and New Zealand is open, but uh, Japan hasn't opened yet, Singapore hasn't opened yet. Uh, those are generally considered slower hours, but maybe those are the only hours you can trade. You know, maybe you got a job commitments, family commitments, you're just limited in the amount of time you can spend in front of your charts. With this two pip method, uh, this is uh, this this would allow you pretty much to trade, you know, any time, uh, day or night, and be able to make eight, ten, twelve pips on a trade. So it's it's definitely worth putting up and trying. It may move too fast for you. I will tell you, if you trade this method, you need to just focus all of your concentration on your trading. No emails. No Facebooking, no you know having HBO on TV in the background and sneaking a peek and see what's going on. You know, no watching football or baseball or anything else. You've got to stay focused on this because with two pip uh, candles, it doesn't take any kind of movement at all for a new candle to form and either get you into a trade or take you back out of a trade. Uh, so you know, devote your full attention to your trading if you're going to be using this. But if you are going to be using this. Uh, you stand a very good chance of of uh, making some very decent pips. Last night, uh, right before uh, Japan opened, for that matter, uh, Parker and I were trading emails back and forth, and I just happened to put this up a little bit after 5 o'clock my time. I think it was around about 5.30 or 6. And between about 5.30 and I want to say maybe 7 or 7.30, there were a couple of very nice moves that took place, and you know the 30 or 40 pips was there for the taking. In fact, there was one trade I think ended up going like 70 pips uh, at one point, which is you're not you're not going to see that every night, obviously, especially prior to you know Japan opening. But uh, just having this up there, um, the the uh, knowing how it worked and just simply following the rules of the system, there you know there were some very nice trades, a lot of pips to be made. But even on an average night, I think you're going to be able to find you know plenty of 10 and 12 pip trades uh, using a method like this. Uh, but again, like I said, total concentration. You know, don't don't allow yourself to devote half of your your uh, concentrating power to the charts and the other half to a bunch of other stuff unrelated to trading. I mean, 100% on the charts. Uh, make your pips, then shut it down and go do whatever else it is that's you know trying to drag you away. Uh, you know, because you've already made your money for the day. But anyway, this I just wanted to share this with you and point out that you know I I get these these uh, alternative methods from people on occasion because they are out there experimenting. So you know don't don't feel like you are rigidly bound to whatever rules uh, are being laid down. Like I said, these are not the Ten Commandments. All right, I mean these are these are methods that we have found that work well. And they should work well for you, but if you find something that works even better, use it. And if you don't mind, share it with me because I'd like to share it with other people that are in our group because, you know, who knows, maybe there's somebody else that's more or less in the same boat you are and they would find uh, your method to be far preferable to uh, any of the methods that we've laid out here so far. So if you are playing around with Rinko and coming up with uh, uh, 
uh, different ways to trade it, different box sizes, different indicators, and that you're finding work well for you, then by all means, uh, you know, send me an email, Jeff at simpleforexsystem.net. Uh, you know, you guys should have that thing memorized. You should close your eyes and see it in the dark at night. I've, you know, told it to you so many times. Um, go ahead and just, uh, you know, drop me a line. Tell me the the basic rules to it. I'll throw it up on the chart. I'll play with it. And if I think it's workable for people, I would love to share it in a video with uh, the rest of the Rinko traders. Uh, you know, kind of help give back to uh, the community because we have a pretty giving group out here. Guys are, are very willing to share and trade and, and uh, uh, trade information. And uh, if I can kind of be the clearinghouse of that and, and pass it on to you, that's what I want to do. So uh, anyway, thought I'd share that with you. Hope you find it useful and uh, hope uh, to hear from some of you with some more good trading ideas using Rinko. Uh, if you got them, drop me a line. Tell me what they are. So until next time, uh, make another video. I guess we'll, this will be it, and I'll see you then.